Um, okay, uh, I have said I'm not. Uh, I I will not. Uh, okay, I will sing uh, Nagumo Mo, and uh, I, I'll just try. Uh, it, it's it's not like uh, I would say I want it to be like this, but sometimes when I'm singing other sangatis, just, just sing. I, it's, 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 it's okay. I we'll figure it out. Just sing. We should we should talk less and sing more. Nagumo mo ganale ni na jali deli si na nu bro vagara da ashi ragu vara ni nagumo. I wanted. I mean, uh, whenever there are gamakas, I I just wanted to make sure that. I don't miss any uh, swaras in between. Uh, sometimes no, that, that is not voice culture, as per se. Um, I mean, voice culture has to do with how you produce those notes. Okay. And whether you produce every note is a matter of practice and matter of uh, paying attention to detail. Okay. So what I do when I have such you know you you had a complicated up and down sangati like that. Is to break it down piece okay. by piece, right, and then make sure you sing it separately in isolation. Right? Sing it many, many times. Okay. Make sure that so it's all about muscle memory, right? So okay. all the great with ones when they get on get on stage, they are not really aware of what they're doing, right? They just go into a trance, and then they sing, and their body sings essentially. They're not thinking about it. So we also have to get to that point where we don't have to think about what we're singing. and the way to get to that point is to just have this kind of smart practice so you don't so for example practice doesn't mean using every song from start to finish and sing that 10 times because what i have seen in many of my students is that they will pallavi will be smashing perfect then anupallavi will be a little bit and charana will be total disaster because they always focused on starting at the beginning okay and so the pallavi will be having the most practice part of the kriti then okay. as they go on so you have to pick and you have to know what are the challenging parts of the song and then practice them separately okay right so think like an athlete so athletes who you know who take you know say do long jump right they don't always jump every time they break it break down their uh, action into pieces right the sprint the take off the landing they practice that separately and then only the very end they put it together So that's what we have to do in singing also. So okay. try that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, uh, sir. But but one thing about voice culture though is that what will happen is that now that we are tweaking the way you sing, that some of these things that came so easily to you will suddenly become hard. <laughs> right? I mean, it happens because we don't necessarily sing consciously. Right? A lot of it is just involuntary action, and. that involuntary action happens because you've been practicing it in a certain way and your body executes in a certain way the moment we change that there will be a period of confusion it happened to me that uh, i would sing a song i would go in with all the intentions of using my newly found knowledge and then somewhere along the way i'll slip back to oh uh, you know the old way of singing the comfort zone yeah i would not even be aware of it And then five minutes later, I say, "Oh, what happened?" Then I start noticing how I'm singing. Then I see, "Oh, I'm no longer singing the new way. I'm singing the old way." This will happen, and there's there's no uh, medicine for it. You just have to practice, and it'll time it'll come over time. But the thing is, um, I think the 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 most important thing I want to impress upon people is that what we are trying to do here. does not take a lot of time but it takes persistence so you do it 5 minutes every day is much better than doing you know one and a half hours twice a week that is my experience because the body learns like this it it learns in a very strange way and and then we have to make this a kind of a a involuntary activity right so you don't have to think about it and then after that you let it take care of itself Thank you sir. Okay.
All right, so let's get started with today's uh, topic. The all important topic, uh, which I think both Arpana and uh, I think uh, Shankar uh, wanted to discuss, which is voice range. Uh, how to get into the high notes. And Arpana wanted how to get into the low notes. It's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, but neither, they're not here, so we'll see. They'll show up, it's fine. But that is a very, very important um, aspect of singing, singing the right range and singing range the right way. And so the analogy I draw for this is, so a lot of people make the analogy that a voice is like a high rise building. You're, and when you sing, it's like going up and down an elevator. The reason I don't like that uh, analogy is that it makes people think that high notes go high. And then we think that their head goes up, right? But that's actually bad. When you're singing, your head should be perfectly stationary because when you move it up or down, you, you obstruct your uh, voice passage and that actually reduces the uh, quality of your voice. But also this big bigger problem is you'll see with many Carnatic artists is that the mic will be right here. And I have this problem too, that if you shake your head, your voice will go in and out of this mic. And so the audience will also hear a little uh, you know, wavering sound. And that's not necessarily good either. So the analogy I think of is, uh, it's like a train, right? a train line. There are many stops on this train line. And there are parts of our voice are, are just stations on this train line. And we are only familiar with some stations because that's all we have been to. But there are many more stations in our voice. We have never explored. And so what happens is that we think that this is all our voices and then we can't go beyond it. So, and, and funnily enough, there's also this thing that sometimes when we scream or do something unusual, you land on a new station and you think, oh, I want to go to that station again, but you don't know the route. You don't know how to go from here to there. And so that is a problem. So what I'm going to teach you is how to link this up so that you can traverse all the stations in your voice smoothly. Just, it's not that you are going to go to those extreme points of your range frequently. But when you do, when you do want to go on the rare occasion when you want to go, you have to be able to, you have to be prepared for it. And it's all a matter of being, making your voice used to the feeling so that you don't do something unexpected or something harsh that will then actually either cause strain on your voice or cause the voice to produce that sound in a less than pleasant sound. So one of the things that we should always keep in mind is producing sounds outside our comfort range. All of us have some comfort range in which our voice sounds the best. But when we go outside, it may not sound as good, right? And uh, somehow we think that if I touch that note, it's good enough. It's not good enough. You have to sing that note in a good voice. Even when you sing those high notes, even when you sing those low notes, you have to still be resonant. You still have to sound pleasant. You still have to sound relaxed. So saying that as long as I touch the note and I hit it somehow, even if it is with a squeak, it's good enough, it's not right. So we have to have that ambition that everything I sing must be good quality. And so this is voice range expansion is that, uh, a series of exercises to slowly get your voice kind of used to all the additional notes that you can sing, but it will happen only in an incremental fashion. So there are two or three things that we have to keep in mind when it comes to uh, range expansion. One is that it can be a dangerous thing to do. So if you just jump and one day decide, oh, I want to sing five uh, notes higher than what I normally do, Maybe you'll reach that note one day. Next day, you'll pay the, uh, the penalty for it. Your voice will become hoarse. You will not be able to hit the note again. So we want to be able to hit the note in a sustained manner, not just tomorrow, but the day after and years after. So that is the first thing. Like, do not just randomly reach for high notes. Prepare your voice for it before you go there. Right? It's like, you know, um, lifting weights. You can't suddenly just increase your weight. Maybe the first day with some uh, effort, you'll push that weight up, but then you'll end with the cramp. 
and you won't be able to do it the next day. So that's number one. Number two, there are very paradoxical things about range. So I've discovered that the, uh, the only way to sort of robustly, without injuring yourself, increase that range is to actually follow belly breathing exercises. Now, why it is, I don't understand. You know, the biology of it is beyond me. But it certainly seems to be the case that you actually, when you sing the way, you know, where you keep your voice supported in the air cushion in your belly, it's actually easier to sing high notes. Okay, so that is some something peculiar about the way the uh, uh, the voice apparatus works, right? So maybe uh, if there is air cushion under the voice cords, they can vibrate to higher frequencies easily or something. I can't tell. But whatever it is, it's it's definitely a fact. The other thing is, so we are going to try and improve our range incrementally. But every note that we add, we want to make sure that we can do it with comfort. And then the moment you hit any discomfort, you back off. Don't muscle your way through. It will not work. Right? I have ruined my voice doing that. So I know from experience that you cannot force your voice to go beyond a certain point it is, you know, it needs to happen gradually. And the final point is, there should be absolutely no shouting. Right? A lot of our singers, when they go to the high notes, they just, you know, blast their voices to reach those notes. And it's maybe something we do intuitively because, you know, the other time when we go for high notes is when we're in anxiety, right? When you're in stress, right? When you when you get hurt, when you scream in pain, it's a high note. But that production of a high note, it is, it's your whole body is involved. Everything goes up. Everything is stressed up. Your larynx will move up. Your face will get contorted. And you'll reach out and, and let out a scream. And that is the one time we are experienced, to have the experience of reaching a high note. But that is not a sustainable way of reaching a high note. You can do that under stress. But if you do that every time, then will end up in injury. So what we have to do is put a very ironclad rule that we cannot increase volume when you go to high notes. It has to be the same volume that you sing our other notes. And it is possible. If you are finding that you have to increase your volume when you go to high notes, you're doing something wrong. So we have to keep this in mind that uh, these are the, the rules. You have to be uh, belly breathing, good support. Second is relaxed voice. Third is incrementality. And fourth is no shouting. Okay, so we have to remember this. And I, I, yeah, I know that, you know, this is a vocal range extension is a desire for a lot of people. But it's also a very tricky thing. And this is not something you can get with impatience. It takes time. Unfortunately, it, it is not going to happen overnight. So I always hesitate when people come to me and ask me, please show me how to do this. <laughs> okay. You know, this is a, uh, I have to put all these caveats before I teach you how to do this. So I can set your expectations properly. Okay. So all that said, I can start with the exercises. Any questions, any particular requests um, on this topic? No? Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our voice is nicely supported because even more than any other context, right now it's very important that our voice is uh, supported. So we are going to sit up straight like we normally do, shoulders back and down, breathe in, make the big belly. Okay. We're going to test the um, efficacy of our belly breathing. Before we sing anything, let's do this. We're going to do shallow breathing. Shallow breathing means we want to breathe, but we're going to breathe a little bit, like sipping, sipping water. You're not going to take gulp of air. You're going to take a sip of air. 
And we are going to do that without moving the upper parts of our uh, torso, just the belly. And you can do it, we have done this before, but I want you to remember that feeling because we are going to use that in vocal range extension. Okay, so let's start that. So I'm going to, and, and you can do it with me. I'm going to take a breath. And then I'm going to um, hold, let's see. I'm going to hold for a series of uh, count of four. Uh, expel some air. One count of uh, exhale. Count, hold for count of four. Exhale some air. Count four. Then take an inhale, but small inhale. You're not going to do this long uh, stretches of exhale. Two short exhale, two exhales of four. Inhale, then two exhales of four. Okay, so we want to get used to the idea of taking short breaths, which is very important for this. So it goes like this. If you want, you can put your hand on your belly like this to feel the movement of your stomach as you do it. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So it's difficult to show you this in a Zoom. So I'm going to count out now what I did. So uh, when I when I do when I count out like this, that means I'm exhaling. When I count this way, that means I'm inhaling. Okay. So I'm inhaling now. So. And relax. So I, I hope you got that. When I was holding my fist, that means I was holding. And the reason we want twice the breathing inhale, uh, sorry, uh, the exhale is twice the length of the inhale, is because when you're singing, we are uh, letting out air in a released, in a, in a controlled manner, so we can sustain the exhale longer than the inhale. So the inhale is fast and short, and the exhale is slow and controlled. So that is the nature of breathing and singing. Okay, so now that we are relaxed, we're going to kind of remember this, and we're going to do the first um, sort of exercise to, um, let's see, which one I did I want to exercise? Yeah, so um, I'm going to pick a note for myself. You can do the same. So the, the essential note for high notes is ooh. Right, the, the vowel. So O is the easiest and E is the next easy. So I'm going to do O. And the way it's going to do is we are going to slowly go from a comfortable point and go up, build up like this. When we reach a point when it gets uh, uncomfortable, immediately we stop. So the way we do it is O, O. I don't know if you could hear, my voice kind of changed when I reached that high point. That is your signal that you should stop. You will get past it. But for now, that's where your voice is. So you have to slowly coax this voice out of this range. So all of you can do that while on mute, and then we'll do it uh, unmuted. So I'll do it myself while you're doing it too. 
So did you feel um, that your voice changed at the top? Because I could not clearly hear. Uh, yes, sir. I thought if I go to the next one, it will change uh, after that point. On the top note, right? Yeah. No. OK, Aryaman? OK. So this has to be very, very relaxed. So I don't want to go. I'm, I'm exaggerating what you're doing, but it has to be smooth. Let's just slide up and down. Should I do one more, Uncle? No, no, no. It's up to you. So I don't want you to push your voice. So if you felt a discomfort at the top note, then mm -hmm. stop. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. okay, so go ahead. Yeah. You're doing fine. Are you feeling uh, discomfort in the top note? Um. It feels a little bit high. I feel like I'll shake if I do more. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so the, the point is that you have to get, the, the voice has to be, get used to this feeling of tension at the top. We're going to slowly now give you exercises how to relieve that tension. So that it's like, okay, once that tension for the high note disappears, you can go one more note. Then the tension will reappear. Then again, we have to do some more exercise to relieve the tension there. And that's how you build up slowly. Okay, Anita. Good. Yeah. 
I think the last one, or maybe the last but one, will be. Uh, no, I maybe I went off on that. No, that's one. okay. That's perfectly fine. In fact, you are right. nicely segued into my next point, which is that there's something called head voice that you have already tapped into just now. We will we'll go there now. Um, so, Ramya, you want to try to today? You, you carry on. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll just be a passive listener today. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, okay, so one thing I forgot to say, I had put that in the uh, practice uh, extra credit exercise in the email, which is that how to know if your voice is relaxed when you're singing. And there is this thing called the Adam's apple here, right? This is where oh. it's called the larynx. And you can even try this when you're doing this exercise to see as you go up, if your larynx is climbing up, that means you're straining. So you have to be able to do all these exercises with only a slight movement in the larynx. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, that small movement is inescapable. But when you sing uh, with your hand like this and you feel that it's climbing up into your throat, when you go to the high note, then that's a wrong way to sing. It's a, it's a good, easy test to know. Uh, there are a lot of people who can sing with the low larynx and are still, still singing with strain. So it's not a complete test, but at least it's a kind of a warning sign. You say, okay, this is not what it's supposed to be. Okay, so now comes the interesting part. So we are going to try and coax the voice. And the way we do this, ah, we are, where are you? Hi, Shreya. Yeah, your audio is not on. Hi, sorry, one second. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so the next next exercise is going to look like this. Um, it's called the the um, yeah. Let's let's do this first. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to convert from u to a because the a is a harder vowel to do the high notes in, but the a also has more energy behind it because it's an easier vowel for our voices to sing. So I'm going to teach you to convert from that, that sensation of singing that U vowel to an A vowel. But we're going to do the same exercise, but I'm going to try and combine some of the things we did yesterday into one exercise. So it, this is what it looks like. And get my note here, there you go. So, so the, the, um, the, um, thing we're going to sing is la, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to introduce other consonants that we need to learn to sing. So la is the consonant I'm going to use for the exercise. It's, it doesn't really matter all that much what consonant you use. It's the vowel that is more important. And so the, the exercise goes like this. So we're going, so you have to remember how we sang the, uh, the tongue extension exercise. So we're going to start with, pull the tongue out then pull it back in, and then with that, uh, because this actually relaxes the uh, the base of the uh, mouth where the, the the back of the tongue is, and because for vocal range, the other important thing to remember is to, to not obstruct the voice passage with our tongues. So a lot of people sing with the tongue obstructing it, and then it goes mm, like that, right? We don't want that either. So we're going to start there, but quickly. Uh, tra uh, transition to this. La if you remember that that twang or the uh, sound I taught you, I think it was the first day. We're going to sing that, but now we are last. We only sang uh, one of these. Now we're going to stack upon this. So I'm going la. La, 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 
Obviously, you see the energy. So when you sing an R sound, you can put a lot more energy into it. But I was not screaming. I was not trying to shout. Just at the same level of energy, an U sound comes out much uh, softer than an R sound. So we are going to do this. So all of you, we can try that on mute while I'll repeat this once for the uh, Shankar and. I, uh, yeah, sorry. We just got back from a from a class. We just got back home. Okay, no worries. No worries. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll repeat one more time what this exercise is. So you you should do it at you know your um, shruti, but this is what it sounds like. You stick your tongue out first. Ah, la. Five of this is enough, and what it will get you is the uh, energizing of the vocal cords, so that we prepare them to do this heavy task of now increasing the vocal range. So this is a very this part of the warm up exercises. So next tomorrow I'll teach you a bunch of vocal warm ups that you should do every day, or definitely before every performance. So this is one of the warm ups, and warming up is the next important thing for vocal range extension. You should always only try these things on a warm voice. Never try this on a cold voice. Never try. Get out of bed and try to do vocal extensions. Okay. Okay. So why don't you guys try? I'll give you a minute and then we will unmute you. So whenever you're ready, just unmute yourself so I know you're ready to sing. Yeah? Okay, Ramya. Yeah. Hey, keep your tongue out first. Show me your tongue. Okay. Yeah. the same sound after you retract your tongue huh? don't move the shape of your uh, uh, voice after that because the most important well, no i'm saying most important for five different things now another important thing about voice extension is to keep the mouth completely open you know i want to see your tonsils so when you sing so uh, this is very important for high notes so please make sure that you don't move the voice okay go ahead Ah 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 
Just since uh, it's uh, particular to you, so when your voice cracks, when you're going through this, right? Sometimes your voice will crack. So that's an indication that your vocal cords are still getting used to the stretch. So what you should do if that happens is don't don't just give up, right? So give it a second. Let the uh, voice cord kind of reset back to normal. Then start the exercise again from the bottom. Okay. So it's important to do both. You have to give that brief respite to your voice so that it can normalize, then try again. And the most important thing in these cases, especially when the voice cracks, is to make sure you're breathing properly. So make sure your, your pot belly is still there, right? There is a reservoir, a cushion of air in your belly. There's some air in the tank. And that will help you, you know, uh, keep that voice cords from cracking, okay? All right, Anita. Ah. <coughs> uh, uh... Somebody who says she's not trained in singing, you're singing really well. You're singing beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, I told you, I think I mentioned to you that I did go through a little bit of choir when I was very young. Mm -hmm. And when you're telling me, I was like maybe four and five, it was in a convent school. Right. And when you're telling me about some of these, open the mouth, close the mouth, I remember, you know, the teacher saying mm -hmm. that. Open and close your mouth, open and close your mouth. And I think those things are very important. I was very young, of yeah. course, probably four or five and maybe. Good. See, the body remembers. <laughs> so it could have been a combination of things as well. And I yeah. like to sing. So, right. Thank okay. you. Okay, Freya, you want to give a shot? Um, sure. Just a warning. Uh, right now, I kind of have allergies, so my voice isn't that great. But... No, we are not, we're not judging you on the sweetness of your song. Just wanted you to do the exercise. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Make sure you have, you have a stomach full of air, and then you do it. Yeah. Uh, uh... Big mouth, big mouth. Uh... Slow down, slow, slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 don't stress yourself. This is supposed to be non-stressful. So do only what your throat allows you to do comfortably. Okay. Mm -hmm. So start again. If you want, start at a lower note. Doesn't matter. But what I want is two things: your your air and the back of your voice really open. The rest of it is kind of less important. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Um, Perfect. 
Can you do one more? Okay. You have to do until your first no feeling of discomfort. Ah. There you go. Okay, so that's your range. Okay, that's good. So this gives me an idea of what your current range is, right? So that's good. So but then we can work on making it bigger. What happened to our? Uh, you think they disconnected as soon as it was there? They want to sing. Yeah, Kartik and Shankar definitely not on the Zoom now. Okay. Yeah, I don't see them in Zoom. Okay. Um, so now we jump to the the next. As I said, the uh, the world of voice culture has a lot of unintuitive practices, but they seem to work. And and this next one is definitely one of those. So just like I said, we're going to take this train and move to new stations. So we are trying to go in one direction. The next exercise is to start at the other end and come backwards down. Okay. And ah, we're back. Let's give them a minute. And so what we're going to do is we are going to use a part of our voice, which has all kinds of bad names. Um, and a lot of Indian singers don't like it, but do we have to admit them? Yeah. And and so this is variously called head voice, falsetto, high voice, and a lot of Indian teachers will say don't sing in there. But the problem you know I have with that is you know. This is all part of our voice. So just because somebody calls it a false voice does not make it any less of our voice. It is, this is our God-given gift. We have to use all of it. The only thing is that, okay, we can say that we prefer not to sing using that part of our voice. That's okay. You know, there are lots of musical um, genres where they only sing in falsetto. They never come down. So they, they prefer that to the normal voice. So what we, we are talking now this is called the chest voice. That's also kind of a misnomer for me because I don't know that it's any uh, you know, chest part of it. It's still coming from my throat. So it, it's, it's kind of uh, not right to call it chest. Let's call it normal voice. And then we'll call the other high voice because the, the vocal cords will be vibrating at a higher frequency. And then we'll merge these two. We'll try and bring them in, together into a process called bridging so that you will be singing higher notes using that part of your voice, but without seeming to be using falsetto. So it should sound seamless. So as you go up and down this, this spectrum, um, as the train goes from one end of the train track to the other end of the train track, there's no difference in the sound. So that's the way to think about it. Okay. Karthik and Shankar, do you want to try that last uh, uh, exercise? Okay, go ahead. Uh, 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 stop, stop, stop. I, I heard your voice change somewhere in that transition. So make sure not to move anything in the back of your throat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Did you feel discomfort at the top? Uh, a little bit, maybe. Okay, all right. Okay, so I want you to go until you feel the discomfort and then stop. No. Okay, Karthik? Ah. Uh... 
Okay, good. So every day I give you one tip of the day. So today's tip of the day is this exercise that you just did. It should be compulsory part of your vocal warm up. Any time you have performance, any whether it's a concert or you're just singing one song, the Navratri Golu doesn't matter. You should do this at home before you go, because this is what energizes the vocal muscles so that you'll be supple and agile and do your bidding. So this is an excellent way to get it all warmed up. And believe it, uh, uh, even if you do it a few hours before, somehow the voice will still remember it. So you don't have to be doing it just before you sing. Okay, so now I'm going on to the next, and this is the kind of the first specific voice range exercise is how to use this thing called the head voice or what I call the high voice. So first we have to tap into that high voice and I'm sure all of you know how to do it, but are perhaps psychologically unwilling to do it because you have been told, oh, don't sing like that or don't use those voices or you know whatever. So it sounds like a So this is a voice that all of you can make. It is just a part of our voice, just using the voice differently. Again. But because we are not used to doing it, we may have some trouble doing it. But ultimately, we'll discover that it's actually very easy to do. Okay? And there is no way... I can make you do it. You have to discover it in yourself. You know, the best I can think of is you were, if you're within range, I could have punched you <laughs> in the stomach, and that would cause you to go, ah. <laughs> but let's let's try. Um, then we will go from the top down, and then I will teach you how to go from the bottom up again to reach that high point. Okay, so who wants to uh, Give me their first scream like this. Like that. So the, the, the thing is, you have to keep your voice relaxed, mouth wide and open. Okay, no closing your mouth. It's not, it is ah. Okay, we are not going to do this for a long time because you know you don't want to hurt your voice, but you still have to get used to the sensation of that kind of voice. Who wants to try first? Okay, go for it. Anita? Uh, is it in the tune or is it just... No, no, just, just hit that, that note. Okay. Oh. Higher, 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 higher. There you go. Some more you're cutting out. Do it again. That's kind yes, of a, right. okay. no, no, exactly. You're doing the right thing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that is your head voice. So we have to make it stronger. Yeah. That's like shrill. Yes, absolutely. Extremely shrill. Yeah, it is too shrill for Zoom also. So try again. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom is cracked your... the screen with yeah, that. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom just excised it. So try it again. <laughs> uh... Okay, good. Now I want you to do this, but as you sing the note, relax yourself. Don't think that you're doing something shrill. Just do it, but without any stress. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, that's good. So let's see. Anybody else want to give it a shot? Ah, Karthik, yes, sir. Wait, what's the note? What's Any the note, note? A, a, as high as you can go. Ah, 
yes. Uh, Zoom. <laughs> Try again. Zoom is cutting out. Um, or maybe you cut yourself, I don't know. Uh, go ahead. Very nice. Okay. I want to, I, I got you in the right spot. Just make sure your your is, uh, mouth is perfectly ah uh, and relax, relax your body. Good. One more time. Very good, sir. Very nice. Okay. Who wants to try next? Okay, Aryaman. Okay, so I want you to relax. You're sounding a little um, forced there. So try and not force yourself. Just, you know, it, it's okay to, you know, in the beginning when you start the note, it may sound a bit um, forced, but I want you to relax compulsively. I want you to think of nothing else. Just let the note go out of your mouth. Keep your um, throat wide open and let it out. Very nice. Okay, who else wants to try? Shreya? Um, sure. <clears throat> Hey, the boys were higher than that. You can go higher than that. There you go. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You're doing the right thing. Go, go, go for it. Open your mouth. Don't, don't bite that note down. Keep, keep it open. Keep it relaxed. You're doing, you're doing splendidly. Okay. So all of you should know. So. See how you're closing your mouth like, like that at the end of the note. Don't do that. Right? It's it's not that it's bad for your voice, but that when you're singing, you're singing songs, it has this effect of making the sound be kind of interrupted. So you should only close your mouth when you have to close your mouth, right? When the the constant requires you to close your mouth, where there's an M or a some uh, P or something like that, then you have to close your mouth. Otherwise, don't close your mouth because every time you close your mouth, that has a consequence to the back of your throat. So you may have done all this work to open the back of your throat. The moment you close the front of your mouth, you've lost that also. So you're then doing the effort again and again. So as much as possible, keep your mouth open and leave it open. Okay, all right, Ramya. Okay, one more time. I want to sound relaxed. I'm not getting a relaxed feeling. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, Shankar. Wow, that sounds good. Um, try it again, but, but don't uh, let go at the end. Just keep the note. And then stop. Very good. So another general uh, uh, advice, when you sing, so sometimes we do this, that we are in such a hurry to finish that we don't complete the note. At the end of the, the note, end of the beat or something, we let go of it. And the voice kind of involuntarily drops. Right? That sounds bad. So we should make sure that we stop singing before we let go. You stop the voice. So you go, you don't go, ah, you go, ah, and then let go. See the difference between, ah. So I, I, I was relaxing my muscles at the end of the note, but I should have stopped singing before I did that. So it should be, ah, and then relax. Okay. So now, you're going to do, the, I got everyone, right? Yeah. Uh, 
we are going to do the other exercise, which is to go from bottom to top. And that is a very interesting exercise. It goes like this. We're going to do, um, it's what is, um, I forgot the name for it. There's a, a particular name for this exercise. It goes like this. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, it's like coaxing your voice to go up slowly. Slowly it goes up, right? So we are very used to doing this because it's a very emotional thing. We like we talk to children like this. Uh -huh. right? So I want that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So slowly we get to the point and suddenly you realize that your voice can do much more than you thought it could. Okay, so this is the next exercise, which is, I'll, I'll do it once for you. You can start as low as or high as you want. It goes, uh, so every time you can do twice just to reinforce it. Uh, uh, uh. So the, the end, you, you kind of lighten the sound, right? You go, uh, 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 uh. So that's when I've gotten completely into head voice. So this is the place where you got transition from what is called the chest or the normal voice to the head voice. But we're doing it slowly so that we don't make any abrupt phase transitions in the voice. Okay, so who shall we start with? Who wants to do this? Ramya Ranganathan, I think this time you have to do it. Okay. Um. Uh, 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 there you go. So the only thing I would say is don't don't force it. Just be relaxed. So let the voice go at the end. You know, it goes where it goes. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, who wants to go next? Okay, Anita, yeah. That sounded quite a bit like what I would have done it too, because while I was, uh, while you were saying it, right? Okay. So right. we'll yeah. try. <clears throat> uh, 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 uh. Yes, so you have, that's where you've reached your head voice. So when you voice, you can, you can distinctly see the change that um, you both the lower note and the upper note sound the same. Same, that, correct. That, that's when, that's when I stopped. Yes. Right. So that is the transition. Okay, very good. Okay, who wants to go next? Ramya Rao? Oh, Aryaman, okay, go for it. Ah, 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 ah. No way. So one thing, so I don't know, it, it, I get the impression that it's a bit forced. So just lighten it. So just just let it be, especially second note, you go, uh, the second note will be just you know, easy and floating. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. <laughs> so I can go. No, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I could oh, go yeah. higher, but then I start shrieking. <laughs> I know. That's okay. You know, that's fine. Uh, everybody, all our voices are different. Maybe you could have started lower, maybe. You can try that. I can go. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, uh, uh. 
Beautiful. Okay, who, who, who wants to go next? Okay, Ramya. Very good. The only thing I would say is to at least from the, the camera is really far away from your face, but it sounded like your jaw was moving, uh, like uh, you're okay. closing your mouth when you're doing it. So try without moving anything in your face, just the voice moves. Okay. Try again. Ah, uh, okay, sir. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Perfect. Who wants to go next? I think Karthik or oh, Shankar, okay, Shankar. Uh, uh... So two, two things. No, the range is fine. Uh, your head was bobbing oh. when you were doing this. So don't do that. And second is, uh, I want the end of that note to be lighter. So it has to be just like silky smooth. Uh, uh, like that. Okay. Uh, I'll Let try. go of the words. So don't don't control. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there you uh, go. Uh, 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 Okay, very good. Go to Ah, 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 you want the voice must want to kind of float up. Yeah, relax, relax. Can you go any higher? That's it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, Shreya. Hmm. Uh, 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 no, 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 you're, you're doing, uh, uh, no, the second note has to be, uh, uh, like that, like you're talking uh, to a, like a baby, sorry, what, like a, you're, like you're talking to a baby, oh, okay, um, uh, 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 Okay. Hold on. So let me let's try again. So go down. I think you're starting a bit high. So so try this. Uh, so when you do the um, the the rise, so go let completely go of your voice. Go. Uh, like uh, let it go laterally, yeah. Try uh, once. Uh, okay. Like, Keep going. Uh, 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 yeah, you're hitting the range, yeah. Okay. So that's fine. 
so now we're going to put this all together, what we just did, into one thing, which is called the siren. The siren goes like this. Uh, This is a train going all the way to the end of the junction and coming back. Okay, so it will take time. So this is not something you can get necessarily first. Maybe some of you can, but let me do it again. Uh... This just combines all these notes. So let's see how far you can go. Just do it and then, you know, this is something for fun you can try any time, right? In the shower, or in the walking, whatever. But I want to introduce you to this. This is a legitimate vocal exercise to increase your uh, bridging. This is a bridging exercise, okay? So I think the, the person who asked me for bridging was Shankar. So let's start with him. Uh... Nicely done. So try even higher. See if you can go even higher than that. Okay. Uh... Uh... Yeah, you can go higher, but it will take some time. Yeah, but but very nice. Obviously. Yeah. There is, for a first attempt, it's spectacular. Okay, who wants to go next? Let's start with Shreya this time. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is dying. Okay, well, okay. first of all, okay. I can't say for sure, but it looks like your, your mouth is not wide open. I want you to really open your mouth. Because the higher the note, the bigger the mouth has to be. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you're losing breath. Okay, so that's the thing. So that's why the belly breathing is also very important. So you have to use as little air as possible when you're doing this. So what you're, run you're running out of air, right? So why don't you start at a higher note so that you don't have to use it? Mm -hmm as much of your breath to reach the top. Uh, hey, go oh, one more time. Uh, no, come, come all the way down. Don't, don't let, you know, you're kind of parachuting from the top. No, no, you have to come slowly all the way down. So go up and then come down all the way until you come to a stop. Uh... What happened? You're running out of gas. <laughs> it's okay. My voice but, is but, just not working. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm not asking you to sing the notes. I'm not saying, uh, I'm, I'm, I want you to smoothly go. Right? Ah, like that. Try one more time, one last time. Okay. Uh... There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, Ramya Rao. Uh... I suspect you can go higher than that. You can try one more time. Okay. Uh... You can go higher than that. You and I, I can go, I can touch that note. That means you can go at least half an octave higher than that. Okay. Uh... Yeah, 
Não, é Ian. Uh... So you have to go to the stratosphere. You have to go into orbit height and come down. Okay. Uh, Karthik? Uh... Who are you? You're trying to do SpaceX rocket here. No, no. Slow down. And, and, and try and go higher if you can. Slowly, slowly. No, no need to rush. Well done. Can you go higher than that? I'll try. Okay. There you go. So when you get to the very top, there's some funny thing that will happen to the voice. You'll hear like a pop. And you know that you have maxed out. You know, you're not going to get any higher than that. Because that's when your vocal cords are essentially saying, <laughs> that's it, boss, I'm not going any further than that. Okay, Ariman? Uh, uh, You found that, okay. Uh, one more time. You you did really well there, okay. You found that height, okay. Go, go ahead again. Uh, that's okay, that's okay. So, in fact, we should always try and see where our boundary lies. So every time you'll discover that you can go a little higher. Um, now that your voice has gotten an idea of what it feels like to be there. Now, Anita? Uh... That did feel like a sign. Yeah, you could get higher. Yes, I was going to say. I think if I start a little higher than where I did, I could maybe go a little higher. I'll try one more time. <clears throat> okay. So try this. Um, so when you reach that height and you feel like you can go some more, but somehow you cannot get higher, try and feel, to me, it feels like pushing the uh, sound to the back of my throat because there's a lot of space back there. And that helps me get some more elevation. Try that and see if it works for you. Uh... That descent sounded really powerful. Uh, you did that very well. Most of the kids kind of gave up on the way down. They only focused on the way up. That was good. Uh, Ramya Ranganath, you want to try? Uh... Oh, wow, okay, okay. Why did you give up? Come on. I think on the way very back, I'm like, I lost breath. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. So maybe try a little higher, the starting point, so you'll have more breath in you. Okay. Uh... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> You're like the balloon that went into the <laughs> stratosphere and <laughs> didn't come down. <laughs> try to... one more time. Let's see. So, okay. uh, so keep in mind that you have to come down too. So don't uh, okay good okay so so now you know the feeling of what it is oh we lost you yeah? um, to have these two voices 
they're not really two different voices. They just feel like different voices. But that is happens because see, no synthetic instrument can actually do what this voice can do, right? It is actually operating in two distinct modes that we can feel already, right? When it goes to the stop end, it kind of feels different and it returns back. And both these are available in the same instrument. It's like changing strings on a violin, like you're playing on one string and then you change to a different string. But those are two different strings, two different vibrating bodies that are creating two different sounds. Whereas in the, the voice, it is the same instrument. It's like the same string that is able to produce both these sounds. So it's kind of an astonishing feature of this voice that we can do this, right? So we have to now uh, build on it to say, okay, how can we use this in our uh, singing? So yesterday we sang this song I'm going to try and see if you guys can um, incorporate this siren and then the feeling of that siren when singing this high note. So what was that song, if you remember? Right? Bajata Murali, right? Oh. Okay, no, not worry. I, I'll tell you, I'll remind you what it is, right? Oh. Okay, so what we're going to do is so normally we sang, um, yeah. Let's let's so the, the trick I have used, I found personally in raising your vocal range is to do this. So, normally, let's say you sing at a certain pitch, right? One day you practice at one step higher, same songs, same things, just one step higher, huh? no more. The day after, you come back to the old something. The day after that, you switch again. Okay, this is kind of uh, practicing your voice to sing at a slightly higher pitch than it is used to. Okay, so yesterday we sang this at this pitch. So I'll, I'll remind you what those were. Bajata Murali Murari. Sundara Jamuna Kinari. Right? So I want all of you to think. So this is, I chose this particular song because it starts at the high notes. Bajata Murali Murari. Yeah. Uh, so I want you to sing that. But now with this. Um, uh, siren that is in your uh, voice now. Your voice has been uh, sort of conditioned by the siren. See if you can feel that you're, it's actually a little bit easier to sing this line. Bajata Murali Murare Sundara Jamuna Kinare Okay? So let's see. And who Okay, Aryaman, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sundara. Uh, could you repeat that word, Uncle, after Sundara? Sundara. Jamuna Kinare. Thank you. Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Kin Sundara Jamuna. Okay, so combine the two now. Bajata Bajata Murali Murari Sundara Jamuna Kinari. Okay, that's good. Uh, Ramya, well, did it feel any? Let me ask Aryaman, did it feel any different uh, from yesterday? Yeah, it feels much easier to control it, and I feel like my voice has gotten a bit more open. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's <laughs> the whole point of the siren is to open up your voice so that it, it relaxes and doesn't kind of get scared of the high notes. Okay, Ramya Rao? Uh, sir, do you want me to go to like the very highest note possible? No, sing whatever. I, I, this, this is just to now sing a normal song to see how it feels now that you have done the siren. So I want you to be able to compare how it was like to sing it yesterday 
and today. Okay, so I want the same. Very good. I want you to sing. Uh, remember what we did yesterday, the vowels. Bajata Murali Murara Sundara Jamuna Kinara. I want all the vowels heard too. So try again. Bajata Murali Murare Sundara Jamuna Kinare. Okay, did it feel any different from yesterday? Yes, sir. So I was able to uh, reach it with uh, much ease. It was easier to reach it. There you go. So that is the point of range expansion. It's not like we're going to sing some spectacularly new notes. It's just that the notes we want to sing, that we used to struggle with, become easier to sing. That's all. So Shankar and Karthik, I'm, I'm sure you guys know this song. Were you in uh, Karnataka Philharmonic? No, you're not. Okay, so you. Okay, okay. We'll. I, I'll teach you the song. Let's let's get Anita first, and then we'll do this. Oh, okay. So, Bajat Murali Murare Sundar Jamuna Kinare. Okay, so good. However, no, the song is fine. So the thing that the siren helps you do is that the high notes, you can sing without that heavy weight on your voice. So you don't, I'm not singing, Bajata Murali Murare. I could sing like that, but I'm not singing that. I'm saying, Bajata Murali. So I want you to relax and sing, no? Uh, oh. Just like that, yeah. Okay. Bajat Murali Murare Sundar Jamuna Kinare. Very good. One more time. Bajat Murali Murare Sundar Jamuna Kinare. Very good. Did it feel different from yesterday for you? Yes, and uh, yes, it does. And I'm trying to see. If, I think you wanted us to go one level higher, perhaps. We, like, we'll get I to that. Lower. Yeah. Oh, you, you. This is this is not where you sang last yesterday. No, I think I should start one level higher. Maybe I'll try that if you don't mind, okay. Okay. and see if it works. Bajat Murali Murare. Sundar Jamuna Kinare Bajat Murali Murare Sundar Jamuna Kinare Actually, this sounds better than... That sound, the, this lower. feels better for me too. Yes. The other so one was a little lower. This is something that, you know, our Carnatic teachers are very um, guilty of. Uh, you're not in that category, but a uh, lot of the other students here have learned Carnatic music. Their training happens in a, in a register that is too low for them. Because as children, we can sing at very high pitches, right? A, A sharp, but their teachers cannot sing that high. So they will force the children to sing at F sharp or G or something. that, And, and that actually is bad for their voices to sing that way. So one of the things that we need to learn is to free our voices of these kinds of things, right? like artificially dragging it down or pulling it up. Find the place where your voice is. Right. And that's why when I sang that, I felt like I, that wasn't right for me. It yeah. didn't feel right. right. Uh, without knowing the details and the mechanics yeah. of it, when I went to that other pitch, it felt right. So that's why yeah. I wanted to just try that out too. Thank you. Okay, Karthik and Shankar. Okay, so this is the line. Okay, you can sing it at your pitch. I'll just sing it for you. So the words are Bajata Murali Murara Sundara Jamuna 
kinar okay simple nothing complicated the most important thing that we did yesterday was after you had left was make sure that you enunciate all the vowels so bajata do not bajat so when you say u it kind of compresses your voice and you lose your resonance so bajata murali murar sundara jamuna kinar and the way it, you know i'm sure you, you already grasped it bajata murali murar sundara jamuna kinar okay go for it okay uh bajat murali murar sundar jam jamuna kinar okay so bajat murali okay so don't don't uh, shorten or compress any of the vowels can you sing it at half a step higher than that yeah i'll try bajat murali murar sundar jamuna kinar perfect one more time bajat murali murar sundar jamuna kinar so you can see that it feels different when you sing it a slightly higher note but it's not impossible it just feels different and it's not that you have to sing like that every time but it's important for the voice to get used to that feeling right okay kartik ba ba jat murali murar sundar jamuna kinar okay i want to ask we really ask sundar jamuna kinar bajat murali murar sundar jamuna kinar very good now like uh, shankar can you push it up one uh, half step up? i'll try mm-hmm. bajat murali murar sundar jamuna kinar beautiful one more time bajat murali murar sundar jamuna kinar so both of your voices sound better at the higher pitch because your voices are more kind of um uh, you know synchronized with the notes and you know maybe because you have been singing for and half hours and you have warmed up now you actually sounds better at the higher pitch so don't ever you know succumb to the temptation of lowering your pitch just because it's easy to do right okay so i think we are at the end of time yeah anita you have a question you are on mute I have to leave for another meeting. Yeah, we're done. Late, but you're done almost, right? We're yeah, done. Yeah. yeah. So the only question, only thing is now homework. So I want you to uh, to do this siren wherever you can, however many times you can. This siren is what is going to help you with the uh, voice expansion. Right? It may not sound like it in the beginning, but I guarantee you, it will increase your voice. In fact, you'll find that you and your siren reach. will expand will go even higher into the thing uh, arpana is not here but i want you to also go into how to go down it's not just about going up you have to go you know to the left also uh, to lower notes so we will we'll try and get that tomorrow but yeah so that's the homework for today um, 